The ranked matchups on Conference Championship Saturday include the American Conference Championship with Tulane taking on UCF and the Green Wave pull away in the second half for their first ever American Conference Championship 45-28. We've got Steve Helwick on the line from Newman Stadium to break down the action for us. Steve, you can join him on Hustle Belt Underdog Dynasty there on SB Nation. Steve, we appreciate you being here. Uh, give us your initial thoughts about the Tulane's big win. Yes, it was an incredible game by Tulane's offense. They had 648 yards of offense, which usually this Tulane team this year has been known for their defensive stops. We saw that when they beat Kansas State 17-10 to earlier in the year. But today, it was all about the offense. Quarterback Michael Pratt delivered the game of his life. He had 394 yards and four passing touchdowns, and three of those passing touchdowns were over 40 yards. Tajay Spears, he had a season-high 202 rushing yards. He couldn't be stopped. Tulane, I think, had... Well, six play, five or six plays that span 40 or more yards in this game. A lot of explosive plays. UCF, they struggled tackling. It was a lot of what we saw from USC last night. Bad angles, uh, just missed tackles, and Tulane was able to take advantage of that in that 45-28 to 28 victory. Pratt's a uh, three-year starter. He's had a remarkable year, 25 touchdowns and four picks, but hasn't really been counted on late in the season, as you well know, Steve. But they needed him today to throw the ball a little bit more than they have in recent weeks. Yeah, Tulane decided that, that their passing offense was going to be the one that took over the game tonight. It wasn't too many deep passes, but it was a lot of hitch routes where UCF just took bad angles and the Tulane wide receivers were getting on these islands and they were beating UCF's cornerbacks. I mean, we saw in the, I think it was in the second quarter when Lawrence Keyes had a just a simple hitch route, made one defender miss, then he's 43 yards off to the house. Later in the game, Tulane gets a 60-yard pass to Shea Wyatt where he just makes one defender miss and he's to the house. So this whole game was just about making one defender miss, and Tulane did a really good job of exposing that for UCF. So UCF had a really good defense to start the season. None of their first six opponents had more than 20 points, but the Knights really struggled toward the end of the year on the defensive side. We saw some of those mistakes last week in the shootout with South Florida, and those reverberated tonight in uh, Yeoman Stadium in New Orleans. Steve Pelwick with us from Hustle Belt and Underdog Dynasty to break down Tulane's win over UCF. Also, of course, the Green Wave uh, righted a lot of wrongs from their earlier matchup against UCF in which they got torn up on the ground. Of course, UCF comes in with the sixth ranked rushing offense in the country. Uh, your thoughts about Tulane limiting them to three yards per carry tonight? Well, UCF's offense stalled a lot. Because going into this game, their starting quarterback, John Rice Plumley, he was pulled in the second half of that South Florida game with a hamstring injury. And Plumley gave it a go tonight, and he just he got tripped up on a fourth down on uh, three drives into the game. They decided to pull him and put true freshman Thomas Castellanos in. Now, Castellanos' college career had been limited to eight passing attempts and seven rushes before. So you're putting in an inexperienced true freshman against one of the AAC's top defenses, and the result was exactly what you expect. Four three and outs in five possession span, and ultimately they put Plumley back in. Plumley said he thought he was uh, better to go later in the game. He just said that in the post-game press conference. that They were uh, commending his toughness, and when Plumley came in, it was a spark for the UCF offense, but it wasn't enough to overcome all of those five possessions, those three and outs, the failed running, because they couldn't pass when Castellanos was in the game. He finished two for seven with eight passing yards, I believe. No, two for eight with seven passing yards. So when you keep UCF's offense one-dimensional, like Tulane did when Plumley was out of the game, then Tulane's rushing offense is going to suffer a little more than it usually does because the pass is just already cut off without Plumley in the game. So I thought Plumley returning really sparked the offense, but it wasn't enough considering UCF's defense was missing tackles and UCF's offense just was absent for a good portion of the night. Tulane bounces back from a 2-10 and ten campaign last year. Uh, they faced a lot of adverse situations concerning uh, a hurricane and having to play off campus for a month and so forth. Uh, Steve, just your thoughts about Willie Fritz's job, the, 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 what he's been able to do this season in, in bringing back Michael Pratt for a third year and bouncing back from 2-10 and ten last year. He's been incredible. He was just talking in the press conference about how glad he is that he stayed and made a commitment to these kids because they deserve it. He was floated around in Georgia Tech rumors earlier in the week before they ultimately hired their interim head coach, Brent Key. 
But Willie Fritz really built this program after coming over from Georgia Southern and Tulane. They hadn't had a season better than seven and six since joining the AIC. And a seven and six season was viewed as progress because before Fritz got there, Tulane was a perennial two and ten, three and nine team. Yes, last year was a weird year with the hurricane and living in Birmingham. And the players was just talking about how that made it stronger. And they have a lot of the same returning talent this year. Michael Pratt, he was on last year's team. Tajay Spears, a running back, he was on last year's team. Their receiving core, their top defenders like Nick Anderson, Dorian Williams, Darius Hodges. These are all incumbent players. This wasn't a transfer-heavy team. They all stuck together, and they, they had a lot of talent in that roster. They just had to overcome a lot of adversity. Close losses last year to good teams like Oklahoma and UCF and Cincinnati. And this year, everything came together. This team had a strong power running game. Michael Pratt grew as a quarterback, and the defense just made a lot of convenient stops at the right times. And that's why Tulane's 11-2 AAC champions, and they're headed to that Cotton Bowl. They're expected to play USC. That's going to be a pretty good game on January 2nd. Steve, uh, before we let you go, just your uh, thoughts about uh, the program as a whole. Obviously, the three departures leaving the American Conference in a couple of years and going to um, – the Big 12 and just Tulane status in the American Conference. You were there to witness the atmosphere and how much the student body and uh, the campus is into Tulane football. Just your thoughts about the program going forward. This is a program-changing night. I was at the AAC Championship game last year with Cincinnati, and that was a wild night there, a great fan base. And this has some, a lot of similarities to Cincinnati, except we've seen that in Cincy before. We have not seen a crowd like we saw tonight at Yeoman Stadium. This was a record crowd. The students were super into it. It was a night-long party, and I thought they had a great home field advantage. And this is so huge for Tulane's program. When you get the T-shirt fans, you get the city involved, that's when you start building something that people are going to show up and watch. And I think this is really big for Tulane because – Going forward in the AAC, who's going to be the top team when Cincinnati and UCF, the only teams that have got multiple New Year's Six bids in the conference, when they leave? I mean, there's Memphis there. There's SMU who have had some successful seasons. But I think Tulane's right in the thick of things as long as Willie Fritz is there just because he's done a really good job coaching this program up, a good recruiter, and they're really good at building their own players here in-house. And you, you look at some of these players still on the field celebrating – they just have such a good culture here in New Orleans right now. And it, it, it was an incredible atmosphere with the field storm and stuff. And the, you could tell the players were really into it. Tulane's the winner of the American on to the Cotton Bowl. Steve Helwick, uh, underdog at Dynasty and Hustle Belt on SB Nation. Please check out his work. It is worth uh, the find right there. Again, Hustle Belt and Underdog Dynasty. Steve, we appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, thanks for having me.